Lois, you're getting your tubes tied. Why should I get my tubes tied? You should get a vasectomy. First of all, I don't know what that is. And second of all, no freaking way. Peter, it's the male equivalent of a woman getting her tubes tied, except it's actually a lot quicker and safer. Hi, my name is Matt. I am currently at university studying to become a high school teacher, doing my Bachelor of Arts pathway to secondary teaching. I am a self-defense and martial arts enthusiast, and I'm currently on the path to trying to find someone to perform the vasectomy procedure on me. Also, I'm 21. Okay, so I'm sure that upon watching this video and finding out how old I am, you're all going to have questions as to why somebody so young would want to have this procedure done. So the way that I look at it is you essentially have three options when it comes to choosing whether or not to reproduce. You have option one, which is to have your own biological children. You have option two, which is to adopt a child. And you have a third option, which is to have no biological or adopted children. Each one of these options comes with pros and cons. So I'm going to get into the pros and cons of each one of these, starting with option number one, your own biological children. The pros of having your own biological child are, one, you get to have a child that loves you and you love them. You get to see them grow up and go through life and go into this, hopefully, a great, caring, loving individual, little mini you. They have the same DNA as you. Now, personally, to me, that doesn't matter, but to some people it does. Now, again, a lot of this is just my personal opinion, so if you disagree with me, totally cool. But in my opinion, caring about them having your own DNA is selfish as fuck, and I'll get into that later when I explore the pros and cons of the other options. So, pros, you get to see a nice, loving little mini you grow up and transform and care for them, give them a great quality of life, they have your same DNA. The cons of having your own biological child are that you are now essentially responsible for every single decision that that child makes. So, you're responsible for bringing this life into this world, you're responsible for all the greenhouse gas emissions that they will produce. You're responsible for if they decide to consume meat, cow's milk and eggs, the animal suffering and the animal abuse that will take place because of that. You're responsible for the deforestation and ocean dead zones and resource consumption that they will be, be contributing to heavily. Uh, so to me, those cons outweigh those pros. And I guess you'll see a bit more of uh, why that is as we progress onwards through this conversation. Speaking of that, let's move on to the pros and cons of adopting a child. Now the pros of adopting a child is to me the exact same as the pros of having your own biological child because I don't give a fuck about if that little mini me has my actual DNA. They could be a black slash Asian child and I could still love them with all of my heart. That doesn't affect me whatsoever. So. All of the same pros as the first one, you get to see this beautiful, loving, caring person evolve and transform and you get to help them through that, those stages of life. Also, an additional pro is that this person, if you don't adopt them, they're essentially in a place in their life where they feel very unloved. They feel like, you know, they don't have a family. They don't have anyone that's really there for them except for, you know, potentially the people that are also in foster care with them, but for the most part, they don't have a feeling of belonging. And when you adopt a person, you get to take them out of this incredibly negative environment and put them into, bring them into your family and give them someone to depend on, someone to lean on, someone who they know is actually there for them. And that's, that, that's amazing to me. So you, you're essentially, a lot of the time, statistically, potentially saving a life. Because when people grow up in this negative environment and get to adults, a lot of them end up homeless. A lot of them end up joining the military just because they don't really know what else to do with their lives. They don't have a lot of skills because they did very poorly in school because of their negative life experiences. Uh, they, they impacted their schoolwork and their grades, which then impacted the jobs that they could get, of course. So by taking them out of this negative environment and putting them into a loving, caring family, you're very potentially saving a life there. And I think that's amazing. Uh, now, the other pro is that, like I said before, with the biological child, the cons were that you're now responsible for all the greenhouse gas emissions, etc, etc. If you don't adopt this child, for argument's sake, 
you uh, they will be they will be contributing to ocean deforestation, greenhouse gas emissions, animal abuse, whether or not you adopt them. You're not responsible for bringing their life into existence. So if you don't adopt them, they're still going to be contributing to that. Now, if you do adopt them, worst case scenario is they don't listen to anything you have to say, they don't give a fuck about you, whatever. They continue to do the amount of damage that they would have otherwise been doing anyway. So you're not actually contributing to any kind of negative impact on the planet, on the animals. So, yeah. Best case scenario is that you're actually able to influence them and reduce the amount of suffering that they do cause. So, that con of having a biological child and having them contribute to deforestation, greenhouse gas emissions, the destruction of the planet, etc. is not there with adopting because they're going to be doing that stuff regardless of whether or not you have any kind of impact on their life. However, like I said, if you do have an impact on their life, it's likely going to be a positive one and it's going to be one that influences them to make better kind of decisions, therefore reducing the damage that they cause. And the third option was, of course, not having any adopted or biological children whatsoever. Now, pros, you're not negatively contributing to the planet. Cons, you don't have a family and you're also not positively impacting any kind of child's life or bringing them into a loving family. So that one's kind of neutral for me. As far as I look at it, option one, having your own biological child, is, it's, it's purely negative. It, when I look at it, that's what I see. Um, again, my personal opinion, if you don't agree, totally cool, I'm just doing this to avoid having to reply to all these millions of comments that I'm probably going to get asking why. Adopting, you get to positively influence an individual and potentially positively influence damage being done to the planet. So make that damage less. Not having a child, you don't get to positively or negatively influence anyone. Yeah. So taking into account that that is my view and outlook on the whole thing, in my opinion, it's very irresponsible and kind of a dick move to, if I am 100% positive that I don't want children, to place the responsibility of birth control on the female, especially when you consider that things like the pill and other hormone influencing types of birth control essentially fuck girls up. Now, if I know that I don't want to have children, why would I put them through that shit? when this is a very simple and virtually, virtually risk-free risk -free procedure that I can have. Uh, it seems like a no-brainer to me. If I don't want to have children, I don't want girls to go through this crazy shit, if I want to have sex with them, this, this is the least dick move thing that I could possibly do. Hi, I'm calling to inquire about the vasectomy procedure, please. Yeah, cost, honestly, like at this point in time for me, cost isn't really an issue. Uh, before we get into the nitty gritty and all the, all the details, I just want to make sure that my age won't be an issue when it comes to the surgeon deciding to operate on me. Yeah, so I'm, I'm 21 years old. Yeah. Okay. So you don't you don't think there's any way that I could possibly convince him if cause you don't you don't sound very confident that he's gonna say yes. Uh, it sounds like you guys just kind of want to take my cash to be honest. Hello. Hello. <laughs> she hung up. Hello. Um. Yeah, I'm calling to inquire about the uh, vasectomy procedure, please. Yes, I do want to book in, but just before we do that, I've had a few issues in the past with this. Uh, I just want to make sure it's going to be all good. So essentially, I've gone in to get a vasectomy before, uh, booked in and everything, but then when they found out what my age was, because they didn't check that out before, no matter how well I explained my reasoning to them, they wouldn't operate on me, and they ended up losing out on quite a bit of cash. So I would just like to make sure that my age won't be an issue with this. So... Uh, I'm 21 years old. You said he's going to have an issue with my age, so he's pretty much just going to say no, really, isn't he? Being realistic. Yeah, that's what I thought. Alright, well, <laughs> thanks for being honest, I guess. But before we work out a date, I'd just like to check out that 
my age won't be an issue when it comes to whether or not the surgeon decides to operate on me. Uh, I'm 21, so no, no chance, you don't think. No chance at all. Okay, cool. I'll just stop you right there for one second, <laughs> sorry. Uh, before we get into all the details of costs and, and the like, I'd just like to see whether my age is going to be an issue when it comes to whether or not the surgeon is going to want, want to operate on me. Yeah, so I'm, I'm 21 years old. All right, no worries. Well, thanks for the, the talk, I suppose. Bye. So essentially what's happened is I've spoken to every single vasectomy procedure in New South Wales that doesn't look super dodgy and they've all said no purely because of my age. Um, so it looks like we're going to have to go interstate for this one. Uh, I can say goodbye to a lot of my money because now not only am I going to have to pay for the procedure but I'm also going to have to pay for accommodation and flights. So. Fuck me. Hello, yes, uh, I'm calling to inquire about the vasectomy procedure. Yep. Okay, cool. Uh, before we get into all that kind of stuff, I'm just wanting to look at whether or not you guys age discriminate. So, the legal age to get a vasectomy in Australia is 18 years old, however, a lot of surgeons will refuse to operate on you until you're at least 40, married with 8 kids. So I just want to make sure that's not the case with you guys. Uh, I'm 21. Yep. Okay. Wow. All right, cool. This is such, such like a different response to, response to what I'm used to getting. Alright, cool, so get a note from a GP or a psychologist saying that I'm sane, I'm not depressed, and then bring that into you and no worries. Alright, awesome, I guess I'll, uh, I'll call up to book in when I get that letter. Awesome, thank you so much, yeah, no, I'm, I'm so happy right now. Alright, cool, thank you, I'll uh, talk to you hopefully in a few days. Okay, so I just called the, the first clinic I called in... Um, Victoria said absolutely no problem so long as I have a letter from a GP or a psychologist saying that I am in a sound state of mind to make a decision that will affect me for the rest of my life because that takes the legal pressures off of the surgeon um, and they said obviously if you're you, you're willing to book in for a vasectomy you have thought about it for a long period of time and you're sure and I didn't even have to explain myself that was amazing um, Alright, cool. So that's phase one done. I've found a, a clinic. Now I have to go to a GP or a psychologist and get a uh, letter saying that I'm sane. So, ah, let's do that. Alright, so currently on the way to the doctor, I finally found uh, a surgeon who decided that he is willing to operate on me, which is fantastic. Um, so, five minutes away from the doctor's office now. Not really looking forward to having this discussion, because I know it's a discussion that I've had a million times before, but I'm going to do my very best to convince him, and hopefully he gives me that letter. So, let's see how we go. Okay, so that pretty much went exactly as I thought it would go. Uh, I went in there, gave him my usual spiel that I gave everyone else, and he gave me the usual retorts backwards, the usual debate ensued. Um, but at the end of it, I convinced him to write me a letter, so long as uh, he wanted me to go to a lawyer's office, get a document written up saying that if I change my mind later on in life and I regret the vasectomy, I can't exact my revenge on him by suing him. So I have to go to a lawyer, get a document written up, sign that, come back here, and then we go from there. Okay, so I finally have the lawyer's notes, um, and I'm on my way back to the same doctor to show him that documentation, so hopefully he will stick to his word and um, give me the 
procedure and yeah so this should be the last stop before I actually go and get my operation hopefully so uh, wish me luck mission was not a success um, if anything it just got way way harder so I brought him the, the document like I was supposed to and now essentially he wants me to write a 30 page essay uh, which is more than I've done at university and I've been doing uni for a year so a uh, 30 page essay on why I want a vasectomy uh, all of the reasons listed in essay format uh, he wants me to get a different kind of lawyer's note because apparently it wasn't acceptable he wants the lawyer's details at the bottom um, and he also wants me to go see a psychologist and the psychologist bit I get but the 30 page essay like really um, so anyway, he's recommended me to a psychologist, so I have to go and do that now, and then the psychologist will decide whether or not I am in a mental state, capable of making mental decisions that will affect me for the rest of my life. He'll send that letter back to this guy, then I'll come back to him and get the, um, note. Okay, bye. Alright, either or. Mm -hmm. There you go. Just point in my general direction. And just press yeah, this one. It's already filming. Oh, is it? Sorry. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> you are my Sorry. savior. <laughs> I laughed, you know. <laughs> no, perfectly acceptable. Thanks so much. So the day has finally come. I have made my appointment after all this time. We've driven to the place and I'm about to go in there, sign some forms and then um, get my, uh, my balls cut. So let's do this and I'll talk to you when we're done, let you know how I'm feeling, pain-wise, etc. Yeah, let's, uh, let's do it. Okay, mm -hmm. alright, I'll come around this side then. Well, that, that's a good spot to do, I reckon. Oh, do you reckon if I say it? Yeah. Well, it's going to go on YouTube, so I don't think balls are allowed on YouTube. <laughs> no, I don't uh -huh. think so. <laughs> oh, um, really? Yeah. So right. Sort of... sure. I remember as a 12-year-old child trying to find boobies on YouTube and you couldn't, so... Definitely mm -hmm. not on YouTube. <laughs> okay. So, yep, I am currently in the procedure, and it is not as unpleasant as I thought it would be, which is nice. Um, Mr. Mr. Snip is much more the most professional one that I've come across so far, making me feel very comfortable. And um, yeah, assistant is what's your name? Paige. Paige, the assistant Paige is behind the camera filming me right now, so they're very open to having footage, etc., which is pleasant. And um, I'm just talking constantly to take my mind off of what is happening to my genitalia. Um, but yeah, so far so good and very positive experience. So. I recommend. Um, well, we've got the tube, and we're just gonna. Now, can you feel this at all? No. Not uncomfortable. No. So we've got the tube there. We're just gonna pull it out of the little hole we've made in the screw. I feel nothing. That's good. And we are done. That's it. That's it. Beautiful. Not much to it. Yeah, no, that Some was... Some are easy. Yours are nice, easy ones to work on. Oh, stop. That's true. <laughs> the first no, one... I mean, you say that to all the boys. No, no, no. no, no. no. <laughs> the first guy today, um, you just wish he went somewhere else. It took like over half an hour. It took, really? it took half yeah. an hour. Yeah. This has taken five minutes, you know. Yeah. It's just simple. We're not the greatest photographers for you. But... <laughs> all good. I'd rather you be trained in uh, cutting open my balls <laughs> than photography. So that's the test in 12 weeks time, right? Yep. And the most important thing is my card with my mobile number. So if you think something's not right, yep. you know, if you need more than ibuprofen, basically you need to be ringing me up. Okay. okay? So if, like severe pain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something, 
they go back and forth from the night or something. <laughs> Alright, cool. Okay, so they were way more accommodating than I thought they would be. Um, I thought I'd have to try and be super convincing in order to let me film that, but they offered to film it and do a full proper documentary style for me, so that was really, really cool. Um, glad, glad that that was a thing that could happen. So I'm on my way home in the car from the procedure currently, and my pain on a scale from 1 to 10 is about a 1.5, but I know that's just because the anesthetic is still there, and I'm pretty sure it's going to kick in by the time I get home, or back to my friend's house. So, not looking forward to that. Uh, he gave me some ibuprofen to take when I get there, so um, yeah, that's it for the moment. Uh, very happy with how it went, they made me feel very comfortable, very professional. Uh, he asked me why I don't want children, I gave him my reasoning, and he was cool with it. He didn't offer any kind of debate backwards, he realized that, you know, it was a sound logic and he said, all right, let's do it then. So that was really cool. Um, didn't feel judged whatsoever like I have at other places. Yeah, very, very professional. Um, anyway, I'll update you guys when I have uh, been dealing with this for a few more hours and let you know how the pain's going. You make a small incision in the scrotal skin Isolate the vas and then you hold it in position with a towel clamp Then you snip the fibrous tissue Then you snip the fibrous tissue hey, you'll never have to wear a condom When you do it with your wife Okay, so day one after surgery, so I guess technically day two um, Pretty much all of the pain that I had yesterday is completely gone. Yesterday it was on a scale of 1 to 10 like a 2 to 3 and today it's about a 0 0.25. Uh, I walked around today, did some stuff, played darts, etc. which I don't think you're meant to do but I did anyway um, and I feel completely fine. haven't really taken many painkillers. I took one at the end of yesterday and one this morning but honestly I don't need them. I just did them because they're anti-inflammatory and I felt like I should. Um, yeah, so healing way quicker than I thought I would, pain-wise. Not really much swelling going on, so, so far so good. Hopefully they don't fall off anytime soon. Okay, so I am finally home from Melbourne, back in Sydney, back in the Blue Mountains, in my crib. Um, so it's day number nine after surgery. I had my, my vasectomy last week on Wednesday, and it is now one week later, Friday. Pain-wise, it is pretty much completely unnoticeable. They're just a teeny bit tender. The right testicle is slightly more tender than the left testicle. Uh, I'm not sure how much detail you want, but I guess I'll give you the full information. So yeah, left one is pretty much back to complete normal. The right one's still a bit tender, uh, but apparently that's just a reaction that some people have to the operation and it's completely normal, so nothing to worry about. That should go away shortly. I can do weights. Like upper body, I can do push and pull days. I, I feel as though I can. Haven't actually tried yet. But I'm not really too keen on doing deadlifts and squats just yet. Riding a bike, standing up, I feel like I could do, but I don't really feel comfortable sitting down doing that. Can't jump around too much still. Like I can, I can do that, but if I actually want to, you know, like hit the bag or go for a run or something, that's not really an option as of the moment. So... Healing continuously and constantly at a, at a good constant pace. So everything's going as expected, everything's going well. Hopefully I should be able to start working out again within, like working out properly, you know, like full pace within a week, week and a half. So I guess, yeah, I'll update you when I start to, to do that. And yeah. Okay, 
so it's been roughly two weeks since I last did a diary entry, since I last updated you guys on my position, on the recovery process of the vasectomy. There was a little period, I was researching online how long it took other people's vasectomies to heal, and looking at other people's vasectomy process, uh, the videos of their vasectomy process, uh, and they seemed to heal much quicker than I did, so it had been three weeks after the operation and I was kind of sitting there still with some pain and, and down there uh, every now and then and I was thinking, oh fuck, like am I going to have some serious side effects from this? Thankfully that went away and now it's all 100% fine, so if you take slightly longer to heal than you thought you would, don't freak out like I did, you'll more than likely be completely sweet. So yeah, as you saw, I was back at training today, uh, doing head kicks, getting hit in the face, got hit in the balls a few times, obviously it hurt, but no more than you'd expect it to when you get kicked in the balls. So pretty much back to 100% now, which is pretty fucking sick. So yeah, this is pretty much the end of the process now. All I have to do from here on out is give a sperm sample to make sure that I have no babies, and that is in approximately 10 more ejaculations. So. I guess I'll see you then, I suppose. So I may or may not have completely forgotten to film anything on my whole process for the last year. So it's been an entire year since I last did an entry on my vasectomy process, uh, sorry about that. But the good news is I can now give you a full recount of my history of the last year and let you know how I went. So I've done, my, uh, I've done two tests to see if I have any little dudes swimming around down there and both have come back saying I'm completely shooting blank, so I have absolutely no sperm in my system, so I'm essentially completely good to go. There's been no post vasectomy pain, nothing has gone wrong, everything's gone completely according to plan, so everything is good. Um, if you're going to go to someone, I highly recommend Dr. Snip, very professional, very accommodating, all the good stuff. And I hope this video has helped you in your journey to try to find a way to convince people to let you have a vasectomy or just to try to find out what to expect on your journey to having a vasectomy. Yeah, hope it helped. Have a good one. See you around. See you later. Au revoir. Um, yeah, catch you later.